Welcome back, everybody, to part three in the this uh, game programming demonstration that I've been doing here. Um, all right, so in this in this video, I'll load the sprite files into the into the program and work on terrain creation. So. This is the folder that I have all my stuff for the game, like here are the basic files, and then I have a whole bunch of crude sprites that I threw together. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make a, uh, a, a new folder and call it sprites, and I'm going to load, I mean put all these into it just to keep things clean. Um, and to load them into the, the program, we use the load bitmap. We already loaded the background, oh, which by the way is now in this folder. So we'll, I'll just go in here and I'll remember you, you name this name the the bitmap, and then you specify a path. And so I'll just go on and fill them all in and probably pause the video because it'll be long and boring. Alright, so as you can see, it, there were quite a few of them and that would have taken a long time and probably have bored you to tears. So um, yeah, go in and load all the bitmaps you have created into your, your program. And then you can use them for sprites later on. So. Um, now we want an easy method of creating the terrain. Um, in, in previous games that I've made, I had the program generate the terrain randomly, but I think for this game I would like it to feel more more structured like a maze or something like that, in which case um, I'll have the program read data files that contain information on like wall placement and stuff like that. That way um, it'll be all streamlined and easy to work with. Uh, so <clears throat> for, a, for a, a the data file it has to have a specific structure. Um, so first of all We'll open it, and the the name for it will go in here, which I have a a test one that I've already created called terrain one dot dat, and then of course for an input file you'd say for input, and then give it a handle, call it number two because we already have number one. All right. So for this specific format, you can structure yours any way you want, but the first thing that I read, input number two, is the spawn point for the main character. Then I go on to read the number of enemies that I call n. And the reason I need that in there is so that I can do a for loop and know how many times to loop. So i equals 1 to n. And we'll input information on the enemy spawn point. Enemy spawn x. This will be an array. Before I forget, I'm going to come up here and under arrays, I'm going to add dimension enemy spawn x uh, well there shouldn't be more than a hundred enemies at any time and spawn y uh, for variables well just cuz we'll give the um, main character 
an initial value for a spawn point because because basic doesn't have uh, doesn't require you to declare variables just to keep things straightforward I like to declare them anyway you know because other programming languages you have to actually declare a variable before you can use it such as in well I've used Fortran before and C++ and you actually have to declare a variable before you can use it alright so back to this enemy spawn y of i and that's all the information we'll need for the enemy spawn points in this data file we'll have information on where the exit is located so exit x exit y um, and then let's talk about wall placements um, we'll, we'll input the number of blocks, we'll call that block count we'll um, then input the positions of each block so 4i equals 1 to block count um, input number two block x i block y i next we'll go up here and we'll add those no probably more than a hundred what would be a safe number let's say 500 Actually, let's just say a thousand, just cause you never know. Uh, we also added exit x equals zero, exit y equals zero. All right, going back here. What do we need to do next? Well, each of these will be um, be a sprite. Actually, the way I'm setting this up. And because there will be so many of them, we'll have a sneaky way to handle them. And that would be to use a variable for the, for the sprite name. And let us do this. For i equals 1 to block count, we will say the variable name for that one would be block and then this is called string concatenation you add another string see like if I did this the result would be block one so instead of typing one I'll do we can't just do I because that'll say hey that's illegal. You can't add an integer to a text. So you use this function, str, and that converts any number you put in here to a string. All right. And then, oh, without forgetting, let's go up here and dimension that array. What did I call it? Block. Uh, a thousand. All right. Next, we'll have um. Hmm. Blow. Well, okay. Print number one. Add sprite. Block. at block x and block y so excuse me this is incorrect 
that would go down here. Sprite XY block there much better for this I meant to say um, use this bitmap use block for this sprite yeah I was getting a little confused there Anyway, uh, one other thing, the way I have this data file set up, in order to get it right, I mean, to, in order to make it easy for me, I used some numbers that worked, and um, <laughs> if you know what I mean, like, because it's in pixels, and I didn't want to have to, like, input thousands of, I mean, large numbers in order to figure it all out, what I did is I set the the dimension of one box one the size of one block which happens to be 32 by 32 equal to a unit and then I just put those numbers like this point here would be 1 1 this point here would be well okay this point here would be uh, 2 1 etc so it's easier that way. That way I don't have to say 1, 1, 32, 1, 64, 1, you know, because that would be too hard for me. So in order to do this, I change the value of um, the block x equals 32 times block x. Same thing for y. Block y equals 32 times block y. Alright. What next? So we've uh, added the sprite and we've positioned it. That should be all we need for this loop here. Yeah. Now before we close, I mean end this subroutine, we'll draw the sprites that we've created and then we'll close the input file so just basic doesn't yell at us. Hmm. I wonder if this is ready to test it out. Um, it's probably ready to test out, but it'll more likely give errors than work correctly. Oh, what do you know? So, this is kind of a, a test that I've done here, just to see if it's loaded the file correctly, and it looks right. Let me show you that data file. This, this would be the... Um, main character spawn point. This is the number of enemies just for this test file at zero. This would be the exit location I think, right? Yeah. This would be the number of blocks and then here are all the positions for the blocks. <laughs> so you can you can structure your input file any way you like. You just have to know your own code if you know what I mean. Like the, the order of things you read them in, and then you have to do that for your, your input file. Now, in, in part two of this video, I'm going to show you a little secret about making the terrain. Because, um, to tell you the truth, I did not just sit down at a notepad and just hammer away at the keyboard for all those data points. I made myself a little program that would make that data file for me and so I could just do some clicking around and stuff like that to to make that. It streamlines the process very well. In fact, you know, you, you always use tools like this in, in game programming. You, you do some programming to make your other programming easier. So stay tuned for part two of this video.